we're living in a numerical light matrix. And there's a lot of synchronicities where you see these digits of numbers and you can catch them so randomly, even in different time zones, even on your microwave oven. It can be a game on TV. I've caught them on basketball games where they, they blow the whistle or go into the gas station and seeing your gas. Yesterday, my gas was $4.44. These things are just showcasing that we are living in a program matrix and these synchronistic numbers expose a little bit of what's going on behind the veil. A lot of people have called them angel numbers. Angels are really angles, angles of light. We know that there are higher dimensions that, that exist in 90 degree angles above one another. And there are multiple dimensions going all the way up. We know this universe consists of a minimum of at least 11 uh, dimensions. And all those are in angles or angels of one another, according to quantum physics. When you go into some of the ancient tablets, you discover that the ancient Sumerians were talking about these angles of light that came down. Those angles of light later became known as angels. We're talking about the understanding that uh, there is, the numbers come from one source, one multidimensional source, and they stream down through the multidimensional universe down into this third dimension uh, as a form of integrated consciousness. And us being number one, is the individuality that we have, but also still being part of the whole. It gives us the capability of understanding that we ourselves have a certain level of control and understanding over our reality tunnel, but at the same time, collectively, we make up all the numbers. And so it's just like you have a radio station in your neighborhood that's broadcasting out frequencies, which are digits of numbers. And then you have a radio receiver that's able to pick up, depending on what station you're tuned to, specific digits of numbers to decode the information. If you imagine that the radio signal being sent out to spirit, and then now take that and convert it into the universal consciousness as being a transmission, each one of our avatar bodies has a capability of picking up a specific numeric frequency from the main source. And that frequency that we pick up comes from one source, it's one consciousness, but I'm point 0.1, you're point 0.2, somebody else is point 0.3, point 0.4, point 0.5, and so we animate this avatar body based on that numerical system that's being streamed out from a higher dimension. We are living in a mathematical universe. Mathematic literally explains everything that we see. Numbers explain everything that we see and, and, and experience, including even the dimensions of our body, the way that we break down uh, light and everything else, all based on numerical numbers, and numerical systems. And so what's beginning to happen is people are finally waking up to a certain level and there's a reason why which i'm going to talk about in a second where they're starting to see a little bit beyond the veil and start to recognize some of the synchronicities that are occurring right around them and these synchronicities have been happening for millennia but up until you know really now as we went through a dark age and come back up now into the light we're now starting to recognize and realize that we're living in a numerical light matrix and that's what we're really living in. It's a, it's a light matrix based on mathematics. And there's a lot of syn synchronicities where you see these digits of numbers and you can catch them so randomly, even in different time zones, even on your microwave oven. And these synchronistic numbers expose a little bit of what's going on behind the veil. And then okay. also you have the capability of tapping into some of these synchronicities. When you see them, there should be an attention being paid to where you are, who you are, what you're doing at that moment, and what's going on around you. It's pretty interesting because I'm born on the 4th, September the 4th, and my master number is 44, which is a super powerful number. But when I got my first numerical reading, the gentleman that was reading me, who had never met me before, knew nothing about me, and this was in the mountains in Jamaica. He didn't even have internet, so it couldn't look me up on Instagram or nothing else. But some of the things he told me, I had never told anybody. Just from my numbers, based on my name, he got the number 44 out of with this numerical code that they, you know, these the numerologists know how to break down. Uh, and he started telling me things about my heart. He said, when you were born, you had a hole in your heart, which is a fact. I have a heart murmur. You know, he knew about my kids and how many kids I had and the type of businesses I've had and how I'm so structured and how I work and how I'm able to uh, multitask and run multiple corporations at the same time. And I've been very successful in how 
tedious I am. And it, he, he just laid it all out. So after that happened, that was years ago, I started paying a lot more attention to the fours. Now here's what's interesting. I used to see a lot of two, two, twos and three, three, threes. But once I was brought aware of the four, the number four, and I had awareness brought to that number, Yesterday, for example, like I just said a minute ago, the gas station, 444. I have videos on my Facebook where I would go to, uh, went to Walmart in the middle of the night, random, just to pick up some candles. And they were $4.44. I mean, just stuff, just crazy stuff like that. So, I mean, every single day, two or three times a day, I'm seeing 444 somewhere. And it's pretty interesting that it's my, once my attention was brought or my, you know, my awareness was brought to that number, at the synchronicity between me and that number in random places all over the world it's everywhere and it's almost in everything and when it when i see the number two things happen for me the first thing is i go mm, i'm still in my flow state because i truly do believe that the synchronicity of me seeing these numbers represents the state of mind that i'm in and right now i'm in a super super flow state the second thing is i pause and I, then i evaluate my current situation and a lot of the times I feel I either remember something that I forgot to do, I see an opportunity to help somebody, or I recognize a situation that if I make a decision either this way or that way, it can be good or it can be bad. So I now I stop and I pause. I just don't go, oh, cool, I saw the number again and keep on going. I pause and take a moment for self-reflection and see what I can get out of that moment. Now. Even if it's not having to do directly with the linking of the number or the synchronicity of seeing the number, I think it's great that these numbers, if you really stop and do that, if you have the time to stop and take a moment for self-reflection, I think you can you can actually tap into some level of enlightenment in that moment, whether it's just a number popping up and you're taking a self-reflection just on your own or something synchronicity to it. But I'm telling you, it's amazing because I've been able to change and enhance so many things just from stopping for that moment of self-reflection and getting myself in brain heart coherence. The nine is a pretty significant number because it is uh, it is uh, an important number in a lot of mathematical computations, first and foremost. I mean, it's, it's almost everywhere. You almost can't escape it, especially in things that are naturally occurring in nature. Nine, the final digit in numerology, the presence of nine suggests a chapter may be coming to an end. Witnessing nine as an angel number is a sign that a meaningful cycle could come to a close and you'll soon have a beginning of a brand new journey. So it's not really the ending ending, like an end times ending, but the end of a cycle and the beginning, and of, the a beginning of a new cycle. Whatever you multiply nine with comes out to be nine. You can't mm -hmm. escape it. Nine times two is 18, one and eight is nine. Mm -hmm. Right, right? Yes. Nine times nine is 81, eight and one is nine. Yep. There's something powerful here. Something else just came to me. Tesla said, if you can discover the secret of 369, you know what the secret is? Mm -hmm. It's nine. Because mm -hmm. if you take three, six, and nine and add it up, you take three and six, it's nine. Mm -hmm. That means you now have two nines. Three and yep. six is nine plus nine. Mm -hmm. Nine and nine is 81. Eight and one is nine. Like Tesla said, you know, and there's something to that. I mean, he literally would walk around his building that he was living in near his death. Yeah. you know three times and he would go up certain floors at a certain number of times he, everything he had to do had to add to 369 that number 44 144 there were 144,000 casing stones on the great pyramid um, some religions believe that only 144,000 people are going to make it to heaven or what they call the paradise right and so we see this recurring theme of this 144 being a very important number uh even in the biblical text 144,000 you know, angels are coming down with, with with Jesus on his return. And so there's always this theme with this 144,000 over and over again throughout history, through many different civilizations and through many vastly different time periods. It makes you scratch your head like, what is up with this 144,000? Right. It's got to be a significant number or they wouldn't have put 144,000 casing stones on the Great Pyramid. So there's a reason behind this. And it has a, a deep significance that goes far beyond any text that we have uh, are laying around, even the biblical text, even the Sumerian text. I think it goes even far beyond that. Uh, the oldest account of the Great Pyramid being built is in the Emerald Tablets. And that was approximately between 36,000 to 38,000 years ago when Thoth, the Atlantean priest king who ruled over the land of Chem before it was called Egypt for 14,000 years, he wrote down himself in his own tablets that he had built the Great Pyramid, patterned mm -hmm. after Earth's force, 
and he built it to stand the test of time so that it too, it too might remain through the ages, which it has. And so you have to think at the time that he architected this and, and drew the floor plan for this and had it created and built, he already had worked in 144,000 casing stones. So we're talking about this number 144,000 going back at least 36 to 38,000 years ago. There's one thing in particular that's in astrophysics that's peer reviewed, that's documented science taught in astrophysics in universities. Uh, I believe it has effect on biology. And so what it is, is our solar system, okay? It orbits the Milky Way galaxy because our sun orbits the Milky Way galaxy. We're on that outer arm, way out in the boondocks of the Milky Way galaxy. But our solar system undulates up and down as it's orbiting around the central of the, the, the giant supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. It undulates up and down. Those undulations represents hundreds of thousands or hundreds of, I'm sorry, hundreds of millions of miles up, hundreds of millions of miles down. Now, what's interesting is just within the last eight years, we reached a point through the undulation or the movement of our of our solar system where it has reached a, uh, a total equal plane with the center of the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. And that supermassive black hole is emitting and sending out an enormous amount of energetic particles on that plane. And we're now receiving those particles directly. Those particles even penetrate solid matter. They're affecting our DNA. They're hitting and pinging our DNA and changing the way our bodies are, changing our genes and everything else, and even our consciousness, even the way our neurons fire in our brains. So I believe that this particular cycle, which is what the minds were talking about the whole time, it was never the end of the world. If you go back to my old post, I would say people were going, it's the end of the world. The world's going to end 2012. It's like, no, it's the end of a cycle. We're going into a beginning of a new cycle. Right after 2012, we hit that point where we actually are at the midpoint. We're actually hovering right around the centerpiece or the equatorial plane of the supermassive black hole, receiving all these charged particles, which are altering our consciousness and our DNA all around the planet. And so that's where we are right now. And I believe that that energetic field that we're in right now, in some way, shape or form, has allowed us to tap into seeing these synchronicities becoming more conscious, asking more questions, breaking out of the old dogma of religions and starting to seek more spirituality. This is the part of a new cycle that the minds talked about that we're headed into this age of enlightenment.